Hi friends! This week we are learning about edible native plants and I wanted to share with you one of the native plants I like to eat. It is called a Douglas fir tree. Let me show you one that I've been growing from seed for a few years. So this is a baby Douglas fir tree that I have been growing from a seed for a couple years now. And do any of you remember that we walk by some big Doug firs on our hikes at the Mercer Slough? Doug the Douglas fir tree that we walk by every time we go to Canoe Garden is a Doug fir tree. We're not just going to eat the Doug fir. So this little tree is very small. You can see how big it is when I put my hand here. And the only part of a Doug fir tree we want to eat is actually the very fresh spring tips. So each spring, Doug fir trees grow new leaves. And they are soft and green, and that's what we can eat. On the older part of the plant, you can see these leaves, they aren't as bright green. These are really tough and stringy. We don't want to eat those. I'm not going to pull off the tips off of this baby tree. It's too small. I'm going to go on a walk and see if I can find some Doug fir tips that are on bigger trees that won't mind if I take a few. This is a Douglas fir tree. So Doug fir trees are evergreen, which means they stay green all winter long, and they can grow pretty big. I'm going to go closer so we can get a closer look. This is a Doug fir tree trunk with the bark. And Doug fir bark is really thick and lumpy. It's got these big fissures and cracks. Doug firs have really thick bark so that if there was a fire, they actually could probably survive a small one. Is your skin so thick that you could survive a fire? Mine isn't. Here's a close-up of Douglas fir leaves. So you can see, just like on my baby one, this Doug fir tree has some soft green new leaves that have grown this spring, and some older tougher leaves that are from past years. When you look close at Douglas fir leaves, you can see that they're kind of like needles, and they're arranged around the stem like a bottle brush. If you look here, right now, Doug fir trees have their male cones. That's what this is what they look like. These are male cones because these are where this is where the pollen comes from. So you can see those there. They grow in clusters like that. Another way you can tell Doug fir trees is by the female cone. So those are the woody cones. I'll show you those. Here's one right here still attached. So this cone is really distinctive. This is how I make double, triple sure that it's a Douglas fir tree. I find a cone and I check it. You can see that they have these really distinctive three-pronged scales. Can you see that? So when you look close at a Doug fir cone like this, and you can find those three-pronged scales, like this one, then you know it's a Doug fir tree. So before you gather Douglas fir tips to eat, you need to make sure that you're gathering them from a Douglas fir tree. So you need to make sure that the tree you're gathering from has those three characteristics. One, it needs to have the thick bark, like this one. Two, it needs to have the cones that have the little scales that are three-pronged. And three, it needs to have the bottle brush leaves. The evergreen leaves that are like needles that are shaped like a bottle brush arranged around the stem. If you find a tree with all of those, you can be sure that you're gathering from a Douglas fir tree. When you're harvesting Doug fir tips, make sure you just get that fresh green part. Just this part. All right, I've gathered about two cups of Doug fir tips. So now I can take them home, wash them, and cook with them. Come with me and let's see what we can make out of them.
Welcome to my kitchen. We are going to be using the Doug fur tips I gathered to make Doug fur tip syrup. Let me show you what all you need. It's not much. All you need to make the syrup is your two cups of Douglas fur tips. You'll need a pot for the stove, two cups of water, and two cups of sugar. I always like this recipe because the ingredients are the same amount. Two cups of everything. Water, sugar, and fur tips. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do once I have my pot on the stove is turn it on to medium heat. And then I'm going to add my water to my cooking pot. And I'm going to add all of the sugar to the cooking pot as well. Next thing I need to do is I need to stir, stir, stir while it all heats up. You don't need to get the water to boil, you just need it to get hot enough so that all of the sugar has dissolved. Once all of the sugar has dissolved and it's steaming a little bit, you can see a little bit of steam coming off, and you can see right to the bottom of the pot because all of the sugar is dissolved, then you can start adding the Douglas fir tips. You can turn off the heat of the stove at this point. Make sure that you've rinsed and cleaned your Douglas fir tips before you do this. And you can just put them in, or I like to tear them a little bit so that the juices are more exposed. You can tear them up as you put them in the hot sugar water. Mmm, they smell really good as they go in. They smell very, kind of like winter, which is pretty silly considering these are only available in the spring. Once you have all of the Doug fur tips in the pot with the sugar water, you can give it a quick mix. Remember, it's still pretty hot. And then you let it steep just like you would a cup of tea. I think I'm going to let mine steep for about an hour before I strain out the fur needles, but some people leave it up to eight hours. It depends on how strong the flavor you want. So, I have let the Doug fur tip steep in the sugar water for a couple of hours now, and I'm going to strain out the leaves using this sieve into another bowl. I'm all done, and I've poured it in this bottle. And I'm going to show you what I like to do best once I've finished my Doug fur syrup. I like to pour some fizzy water into a cup. And add some syrup. So I can have Doug fur soda. If you keep your syrup in the fridge, it will last about three months, maybe a little longer. Don't freeze it though, because it does not freeze well. Sometimes I also like to add the syrup to hot chocolate, so that my hot chocolate tastes like a tree. I hope you have fun learning how to identify a Doug fir, and collect the tips in the spring, and make your own syrup. Have fun. And I miss you all.